We want information. 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 Who are you? The new number two. You know what number two is? Shit. Who is number one? You are number six. I'm not a number, I'm a free man. Ah, it's funny, I know. Okay, we're going to look at information here on the UAP channel. What is it? They say the devil is in the details. And first, we're going to have a look at analog information. It's etched in the groove of an LP vinyl album. The record needle, stylus, moves in along two axes, thereby making the two stereo channels of a high-fidelity recording playback system. Now, it's difficult to quantify the exact amount of information encoded, but if one looks at the transistors, the billions of transistors in the modern micro computer chip, it starts to get a little ridiculous, but it's not beyond comprehension. It's not beyond our grasp. Now, I'm not saying it's not the devil in the details. Listen to this. Where we just analyzed the Intel Trigate transistor, and to me personally, this is just absolutely fascinating and still so interesting. If we just consider how big such a CPU is, like two square centimeters, and we have billions of transistors on this size, and they all work, and if we would take a look at, I would say, 10 other 9900Ks, they would look exactly the same and they all work and I think it's absolute witchcraft that those CPUs are working and uh, really, really impressive and I think it deserves a lot of respect. Witchcraft? Hmm. Wow. Here, let's have a look what he's talking about. So this is a fairly old chip and you look at some very basic connections. It's really the ones and zeros are switches. So you have conductivity to the switches. That's what the transistor amounts to. And you have these little welds. This is old school stuff here. Those are really the outputs and inputs, the, the power and the drain, okay? But the interwoven sets of memory, this is rewritable memory in many cases, okay? There are layers and layers of it, and it just gets so small that you can't even see it, especially nowadays. If you can't even see it with an electron microscope, how do you make it if you can't even see it with s single electron beams practically practically single it's collimated light i think i don't think it's really quote electrons but maybe it is but i'm not totally convinced but anyway whatever the case uh how do you make it how do you quality check something you can't even see now this, obviously you can see it. We've got one that can see. Okay, now that's that was an older chip. This is a still a pretty dang old chip we're looking at here. So we just went from 1996, now we're at 2012. And holy free holies is this complicated stuff here right now. This chip is absolutely ridiculous. It's the, the complexity, the billions of integrated circuits. They hold, I have a computer from probably 1996 in my basement. And if I go to it, the data on it will be 100% still there probably. Every single zero and one, the billions and billions, billions and billions and billions of transistors that were set in a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a second almost at light speed by magnetizing these little switches these little contacts so they're either touching or not touching that's the zero or the one taint no 
in between there's no tweeners it's zero or one a 20 nanometer transistor so small but it goes beyond that now so I've been saying I don't know how they power these this idea of implantable chips and these types of things but now I'm starting to question that like this idea of these biometric things like maybe the body's energy powers it but look at this today on applied science I'm going to show you how I use this antique camera to make ultra high resolution photo masks so the idea is that we're going to take a picture of something hanging on the wall and miniaturize it in size and then use that miniature to translate it into a uh, metal pattern on a glass slide. So the reason I'm showing this is that I was looking at how these microchips are made and it's really, they say, laser etching of something. Uh, they miniaturize it by some technique. I'm thinking it has something to do with this. And the way they shrink things down, it's just making layers of material and then etching it out it's like screen printing in a way except with metal so that you can have the little connections the transistor switches and it's just a matter of miniaturizing this kind of pattern whatever it is so i looked at this technique this photo technique and i thought who's to say they couldn't have done this hundreds of years ago thousands of years ago because look at this simple equipment of this old camera and couldn't you really make a hell of a microchip, a hell of a transistor microchip array chip, Pentium. It's all about the Pentiums, baby. Make one of those with this. Look at this technique. Just think about it. Just think about it. This is UAP. Yeah, I really have nothing much more to say, but I do want, oh, I do want to say this. Um, when I looked at the words that were used, that were coined, that were first written in the English language, which started at 700 AD, the written English language, weird, and uh, really didn't take off till <laughs> the 1800s, really. But uh, in 1500, you know, it starts to kind of start to get going. But in the 1500s, some of the earliest words in this fabricated uh, literature that we have it it's got all these wizards witchcraft witchery all the witch stuff and then they have the fake the phony witch trials that make no sense that's made up bull crap you know oh someone gets accused of being a witch so we're gonna uh, drown them until they confess and then if they confess then we the punishment is we drown them or we burn them at the stake till they confess and if they confess they're a witch then we burn them at the stake it's so stupid so um the the real deal is there was something to do with witches, witchery, and all that, but it's not what they're telling us. But maybe it was education. Maybe so it was this. this. Case, for some reason, it decided to use a tax form and made the tax form the size of a penny and shrank it all the way down. And as you can see, the minimum feature size is super small. It's taken me quite a bit of time to get all the tricks lined up in order to achieve this resolution, which is about 20 micron. The laser printer that most people have access to, and the laser printer has pretty good resolution, about 200 micron, and it can maintain that resolution across a whole page. Uh, and litho, of course, is short for lithographic. And this, this actually means there's a, quite a few things going on in the film. I don't know who came up with Metallica's logo, the artist, but he, this caught his eye because it kind of looks like artist. And I think he developed the logo based on this logo because it just makes me think of Metallica. But anyway, uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's a photographer. Just, just kind of figure that out. S tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. Okay. But anyway, uh, the the thing I said about education, okay, the reason I say that if the f history and science and all that stuff's fabricated by literal, like wizards and witches, if they had this technology, I don't know. But the way he described it as witchcraft, if witchcraft existed, and if that's what this is, then that then what did they have back then? I don't know. But I'll tell you this. When you graduate, a lot of people are graduating right now. It's, it's that time of year. What do you wear when you graduate? Well, now you wear a wiz wizard's gown, but you wear a hat that is Masonic. It's a mortar board. It's mortar and like mortar, you brick and mortar, and you use this board, okay? Mortar board. You put the mortar on, you scrape it off. And, but what was it before then? Hmm? 
Uh, you know the dunce caps? Those are fake. Nobody would do that. That's cruel. Those were the wizard caps. That's what they used to wear. Uh, two, it's very high contrast, but it's super high contrast, meaning that it goes from totally clear to totally dark, uh, almost snapping over. Like it, you would not use this to make normal photos. You would use this to really only do very specialized things like lithographic masks. Look at this argon arc beam. The pressure in the chamber should be about 10 or 15 millitor. I think we're probably just about running properly. So I'm gonna swing the slide into place. So this pretty much just like pummels it with this uh, melted titanium that just coats it perfectly evenly according to this thin layer that they're going for over this masking material that they actually have in place underneath that gets eaten away by the chemicals here. So you can create this, uh, well, two-dimensional, but almost three-dimensional layer. Tour on there so that the metal doesn't form a bridge. Like the problem is how does the acetone get through the metal layer and into the photoresist? Well, in this case, it's such a thin layer that we're gonna, we're gonna get through it with some gentle brushing. I don't think this is a accepted technique, but it does work. As you can see, it doesn't take long. It's already blasted through there. And um, as I give it a little bit of very light brushing, it'll get through the rest of it. And the trick is that the titanium sticks so well to the glass, it's actually used as an adhesion layer. We're not really in any danger of brushing the titanium off. So we can be you know, relatively aggressive with this brushing. So I'm going to continue cleaning it up a bit and then we'll take it over to the microscope and see what we've got. Uh, I've done better, but the, considering that I did this quickly kind of for the camera in, in one go, uh, this is pretty good. So as you can see, there's quite a few imperfections. All the spots are dust. Some of the spots are actually nicks in the wall, um, more than you might think. It's very sensitive to little imperfections in the wall. So all this equipment he's using here, pretty much it's all very an antique and you you could make a computer chip out of it you know uh, intel doesn't have a whole lot to worry about just yet well that's where george bush says leave something witchy behind those divisions there are 10 micron so clearly um we're not quite at 10 micron yet but an interesting fact is that i shot this at f11 and the diffraction limit for f11 is about 15 or so micron so we definitely can't get lower than that and uh, in some of my luckiest settings with the most careful setup and the most careful developing, I've gotten pretty close to about 20 micron. Well, I think he did better than that. And that's a, just a, that's a ramshackle, low budget, half-assed, backwards engineered in first, second try thing. And I'm not, I'm not dogging the guy at all. He's got, he, I mean, compared to me, he's a wizard, all right, with this stuff. But... What I'm saying is I have every reason to suspect that it's possible going back in time that if the transistor were reintroduced, reintroduced by intelligences that have been around longer or have access to information that has been withheld that is from around longer than the real information that we have, which is very limited because we don't go back much past 1850, and a lot of the information switches or snaps over to fake. That we know. We've learned that. We can see it. Because when that ugly old formaldehyde face says, we've got one that can see, she's talking about you, and she's talking about me. And that's why we are here educating others here on the UAP channel. If you want to support me, go to patreon.com forward slash UAPCH. If you want to find my videos, you have to search by UAPCH. CH as in Switzerland. Okay, UAPCH. And dominate an educator. Fund a an artist? Yes, I'm an artist. An educator? Yes, I'm an educator. Well, I'm not really an educator. I'm a remediator. I remediate educators. <laughs> and you can pledge a monthly donation. It helps out a lot. Keep me, keep me doing my thing. My thing. So, and these are lessons worth sharing. They actually are worth sharing. It's not like a TED talk. TED. TED. Come on, TED. Ted. 
Okay, so, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for watching. This is UAP. I'm not going to drag this out. Uh, it's interesting, though, isn't it? Now, I did want to talk a little bit more about the pocket crystal. Oh, you don't know what that is? Yeah, no, it's a smartphone, okay? And that is originally from a company named what? Apple, you say? you the, the Apple tree of knowledge bite out of it. You know, Eve took the one bite. Adam's bite isn't there yet. Interesting. Never thought about that before, but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 that's bad enough. But it, oh, well, but wait, there's more. That's not like the original original. The original is by a company called General Magic, whose logo was, I think, a white rabbit coming out of a top hat. Mm-hmm. Company's name's General M Magic. Whoa, ho, ho, it's magic, you know. Never believe it's not so. Yeah, so have you ever been away, Hake? Have you ever seen a daybreak leaning on your pillow in the morning? Yeah, yeah. So, okay. But we are awake. We're awake. That's why we know. Well, ho, ho, it's magic, you know. Thank you for watching. Catch you next time. This is UAP of the UAP channel. Bye-bye.